Hello and welcome to this video. My name is David Dawn. Uh, in this video, we're going to be creating a uh, MySQL um, server using Docker Compose rather than just Docker itself. Now, why would you want to use Docker Compose rather than Docker? Well, I think the example and the demonstration will, be, will talk for itself. So with that said, uh, let's get started. Okay, um, just a point to note, uh, try and stay away from Vim with YAML files. Uh, they don't tend to like it on Mac. So we're going to use uh, Visual Studio Code instead. Okay, with that said, let's um, start by creating a Docker Compose uh, YAML. And uh, let's just move this in. And the first thing that we want to uh, put in here is then the version. Now the version, um, it, it can be a little bit funny with regards to which uh, platform you're using, or be it operating systems such as uh, Windows, uh, Mac, or um, Linux. Um, so it depends on which different version you've got installed, but I always find version three is just enough um, to, to get you by um, without worrying about the rest. Okay, if you want some specific new things, then you just use another version, but three is okay. Okay, the, the next thing that we want to declare is services, and we also want some uh, volumes in this example, and we want to use networks too. So let's start at the bottom. Why do we want a network? Well, we'll just write it out first, and then we'll explain it. Uh, this example is only going to use one service, but it's, uh, it's more than likely that you're going to have multiple services with inside a Docker uh, Compose file. If you've just got one service, you might as well just use Docker Run by itself. There's not really much need for um, Docker Compose file. However, when you have like lots of microservices and so on, then it's kind of vital to put them on their own network. And Docker actually recommends you to do this. They don't want you to use the, the normal host uh, network. They want you to use this your own network itself now there's some other uh, configuration points that you can do here but this is all you need to do right now now uh, because we're MySQL we want to be able to persist the data so if the container gets destroyed or whatever uh, we want to know that this data was inside the database and all of the tables and so on the configurations all all stay there so we're going to use a volume for this and we're going to call the volume the MySQL volume to keep it nice and simple now, if this doesn't exist, uh, Docker Compose will create this upon uh, executing this one Docker Compose YAML file. Um, but you, you'll see in a minute. Okay, next thing is we're going to have our actual uh, database service and we're going to call it uh, MySQL. Now, it's also going to be the host name on that network too. Now, I like just out of best practices to say container underscore name too. And uh, yes, I'm going to give it the same name. But like I said, I just like it out of best practices to say I'm always going to use the container name as the host name rather than uh, the service name here. The next thing is we want to define which image we're going to use. Now, we don't need a custom image here because there is already one provided to us by Docker. And uh, I don't like using the latest version, even though 8.1 is the latest version today. I like to be more specific because I've got control over uh, which version is going to get installed, etc, etc. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we want to be able to map the, the volume, uh, the MySQL volume to uh, the uh, MySQL container itself to make sure that we get all of the data with inside of that one container to be stored on your host machine. So we say the MySQL volume and then inside a, um, a MySQL server, the, the, the MySQL data is normally stored, unless you've defined it else, normally stored within var lib MySQL. So upon starting, all of the contents of this one directory will be mapped to, I mean saved to basically this one uh, volume. Uh, now um, Linux will save it to, uh, to one place, Mac will save it to another place and so on. I'm sure Windows will do it uh, another way as well, something some crazy way. Um, but yeah, if you wanted any other configuration files, um, for example, if we had like a my comp file, that a custom one that we wanted, that might be mapped to uh, this here, to, to the, uh, whoops. Uh, to this here right and if you had your own um, like say uh, let's just call it client.conf and that was then going to go to I'll say root and then my uh, .conf you could add these here as well but we're not going to use them in, in this one example 
Now we've done that, we want to um, we'll want to be able to access this uh, one container from externally as well. So we need to define which port is going to be open on this one machine and which port is going to be open or exposed on the container itself. Now I like just to be a little bit different. Let's use 3307 rather than the traditional 3306 on this one machine. It keeps the hackers and the penetration testers working if they've just got to use a different uh, port instead. And we're just going to say 3306. So we're going to use the default port that's inside the container and we're going to map it to 3307. Um, now that we've done that we want to put it on a network even though no one else is talking to this one MySQL server it's always worthwhile putting it on a network as I told before and uh, the network was called the MySQL uh, network 2. Okay, uh, now we've done that, we don't have any any other services, but if you did have another services, I don't know, say like PHP or whatever, uh, then you might you might say that this PHP uh, depends upon uh, this one this one service, but but we don't, and this naturally to be able to talk with each other would want to be on the, the same the same network too, and I don't know. Let's just say that you had an Nginx here as well. And you'd want to put you'd want to put these on the same the same network, but also so they can all so they can all communicate with each other. But this example is not about that. It's just about getting the MySQL up and running. Okay, uh, with all that one uh, talking, let's jump back over to the terminal and let's just run Docker minus uh, compose. Now, on most new versions of Docker, you can just say. Uh, docker compose as well without the minus and we're going to say up we're not going to give it any dash d for the time being because i want to see the standard output in standard out so we can debug it and let's do it and we can see that it exited already well this is because we're not we haven't uh, added the, the required um, environment variables which is super interesting so we're going to have then uh, it says here you need to specify one of the following as an environment variable so let's uh, do what it says and come back over to here and um, let's just pop it at the top and we can say environment here and uh, the root password is going to be one two three four five six why would we want to do anything uh, anything else th than that and uh, we can do this too so um, let's now restart this once again and we should now get an up and running server and it will be going through the normal standard initialization steps and it seems to be seems to me that everything is working perfectly fine yet we've got a socket the port and so on so let's just come and have a look at uh, is it up and running well, it's up and running 17 seconds 20 seconds now and we can see that it's running on uh, port 3306 and we've got it mapped from 3307 on our host machine to it so let's now go ahead and uh, execute uh, using an interactive shell and let's just say MySQL and then our user and then a password. Put in our secure password and we're now there. So we can say uh, show databases. And because we didn't define any new databases, right? We didn't define any new users. So we can say, let's just like this, select user host for MySQL user and semicolon. And as you can see, we didn't get any new users. Um, so it's it, it's something that you might want to do if you need uh, any other any other users. With that said, let's just go ahead and do it, all right? So we're going to say the new user is going to be David, and uh, the user password is going to be one two three four five six, and the database that we want it to create is going to be David underscore DB. Now this is where the volume comes into hat, right? or volume comes into play sorry is that it's already up and running so this database is not going to get created so if we if we run uh, docker compose once again and we get out of this and now we come back into uh, say here it my whoops my scroll and my scroll user uh, David and P and is not running so let's just say docker ps and it exited oh very interesting okay but that's because let's just let's just run it again shall we and see whether it exited anymore I think that's just because there were two machines up and running and I killed one of them okay we're now now we're up so let's just run that that uh, command again 
and we're logging as David. See, access denied for David at localhost because that was the volume is already there. So let's now just do uh, root once again. And uh, yes, and now we're in. So now we can say select user and host from my from MySQL uh, user. And you can see the David user is not there. And uh, th that's because the, the, the volume is there, right? So if we now, we now come to this and we uh, stop this one server. And now rather than stop it, we can say down. I mean, it's already down already. And we can say down and minus V and this will delete all volumes. And as you can see here now, volume, MySQL, MySQL volume removed. So if we run up again, again now, and we'll do dash D, just so we put it in the background, the new volume gets created. And if we uh, do this once again, we should be able to access it now as David. And we do. So we can say show databases as well, and we get David underscore uh, DB. So this is basically how you do it in uh, Docker, or uh, in Docker, yeah. Um, now, at the moment, we're kind of accessing it um, through Docker Execute or EXEC, um, but we could just say uh, MySQL here, and then use this, and use uh, P. And we, we can't connect through through to this, right? Because we've got to say the port that we, we opened up, which was 3307. And the host we're going to say is then on the loopback address. And you can see now we can access it, right? So we know that um, we know that we, we're accessing it uh, correctly. So if we say exit and we run this just without the, the, the large dash P, and we do the password 1245. And you can see we can't connect to it through 3306. It's because it's running it's running through port 3307 on our host machine. And the container uh, port uh, of 3306 is open, um, just like we sh showed uh, earlier. OK, uh, with that said, this is basically a, a, a real introduction to how to install MySQL Server uh, using Docker Compose. There's a whole bunch more things that you could do, but this should get you up and running. And uh, yeah, yeah, this is definitely get you up and running. Um, yeah, but if you're just going to be running a MySQL Server or MariaDB or whatever it is on uh, like a DigitalOcean droplet or something, I wouldn't bother with, with Docker whatsoever. I would just get MySQL up and running by itself because it's just another overhead. It's just another thing that you've got to have run on the server. And uh, But if you've got lots and lots of microservices on the same server itself, then yes, I would use it. Um, but anyway, that's uh, another topic for another day. Um, thanks very much uh, for watching. Let's just get this a bit smaller. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions, please feel free to put them uh, in the comments below. If you like it, dislike it, uh, do whatever. But if you don't like it, let me know why not. And if you do like it, uh, please also tell me what you did like. And if you have any other uh, ideas or anything that I, I should do with regards to MySQL uh, and so on or any other ideas in general, um, feel free to um, contact me. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, there'll be a video on the screen uh, right now that I, either I recommend to you or YouTube recommends to, Rink recommends to you. Uh, thanks then. Ciao, ciao. Goodbye.